The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. You go to your doctor when you want advice about your health. It's just as important to consult a professional man when you want financial security for yourself and your family. There is such a man in your community, your local Equitable Society representative. He's not only a trained specialist in insurance matters, but he's a solid citizen and a friendly neighbor. In about 15 minutes, I'd like to tell you more about how he may help you discover the many benefits that may be yours with membership in the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Impersonation. It's titled, The Baby Peddlers. Any criminal who is plotting to swindle you, the American public, is well aware of your habits, your virtues, your weaknesses. For this is his business, to hit his intended victim at the most opportune spot at the most opportune time. Many swindlers hide their activities under the guise of a very innocent appearing business, fake charitable organizations, phony welfare leagues. For in appealing to your heart, the criminal knows your generosity may be aroused, but seldom your suspicion. In this country, there are many legitimate charitable organizations soliciting funds for extremely worthwhile causes. But the representatives of these legitimate organizations carry complete and authorized credentials. The swindler does not. He carries only the hope that the innocent appearing spiel he has rehearsed will convince some generous citizen to give him money. In tonight's case, you will hear of two criminals hiding their scheme behind perhaps the epitome of innocence, a baby. Tonight's file opens in a drive-in restaurant in Hollywood, California. Mrs. Jane Bakeman sits in her car talking to her friend, Anna Maxwell, a car hop at the drive-in. So this guy orders a cup of coffee for a dime and acts like I should crawl in the car and hold his hand while he sips it. Gee, Anna, how do you manage these guys? Ah, you get used to it. How much longer till you quit for the night? Well, I was off three minutes ago, but until Blue Sedan over there finishes eating, I gotta wait. You in a hurry? Sort of. I want to drive you over to the flat. Got something to show you. Hey, you buy something new? Uh-huh. Don't tell me that bull-legged husband of yours sent you some extra dough. Three days ago, you were flat broke. No, Harry didn't send me any money. But he wrote and said that the director says if they stay on location much longer, he might give Harry a bit part. Oh, honey, don't kid yourself. It won't happen to Harry Bakeman. Once an extra, always an extra. Oh, blue sedan's finished. Just a sec. Will that be all? Yeah, it's right here. Uh-huh. Thank you very much. Night. Wait, I throw this tray in the rack. I can leave. Phew. Well, I'd be glad to get home and out of this Bo Peep custom. You'll stop by the place first and see what I bought, won't you? Oh, sure. Only I don't see what all the mystery's about. And where did you get the dough to buy something new? I got some money. And you say Harry didn't send it? No. Okay, keep me in the dark. Now, Anna, it's a surprise. I'll tell you where I got the money, but you'll have to wait and see what I bought. Fair enough. I sold Sonny. Come again? Sonny, I sold him. The baby? Yeah. A week ago, I met a woman in the park, and she thought Sonny looked so cute in his carriage. She said she couldn't have any children of her own, and she was trying to adopt one. Well, sure, a lot of rich people do that. Oh, she's rich, all right. Martin Casey's wife. The Martin Casey? Uh Uh-huh. But just because he's a big shot, they don't hurry adoptions up. They told Mrs. Casey she'd have to wait a whole year. Now, wait a minute. I'm all mixed up. You said you sold Sonny. That's right. To Mrs. Casey. 
I met her in the park again today, and I sold Sonny for $1,000. Oh, but Anna, just wait till you see what I bought. Well, I don't see anything new. Look behind you in the corner. What is... Oh, no. Isn't it beautiful? They haven't delivered the roof area yet, but the radio and the record player work fine. How much? $769.42. That includes the installation. And take a look at this. Did you ever see such a big screen? You. You sell your kid and buy a TV set? Look, what about Harry? When does he get home from location? About three more weeks. I just, what are you going to tell him? Well, maybe I could tell him Sonny ran away. A one-year-old? Uh-uh. Well, I... I'll think of something by that time, Anna. Maybe you could even help me. Hey, look. It'll work even without the aerial. Look at that screen. I don't see a thing. Look at the size of it. It'll warm up soon and... There. Wouldn't you know I'd get a western? Maybe you'll see Harry right by with a posse. All right, I'll turn this down. Never mind. Hello? Oh, yes, read it, please. Oh? Uh, no, no, never mind sending it over. Thank you. What's the matter? Harry. What about him? Western Union just read me a telegram from him. He got bit by a horse? He'll be back in town the first of the week. Oh, no. Oh, Anna, you got to think of something. I have to think of something. You sold a kid. But I have to get him back now. Well, I don't know. Wait a minute. Huh? Get the baby back. Of course Honey, that's quite an idea. Yes, Morgan. I've known all along you and Catherine were seeing each other. I've even been... Uh, uh... Okay, okay, cut it. That's okay, Martin, we'll make a pickup. Now, the uh, line is... I've even been thinking of calling you in for a chat myself. You got it? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Oh, just relax, boy. Georgie, wipe off Mr. Casey's foreheads. Getting a little shiny. Lou, can we shoot another take without a reload? Good. Okay, here we go, folks. Georgie, get out of there. And roll them. Scene 14, Boston, take two. Speed 14, Boston, take two. Mark it. Okay, Martin. Action. Yes, Morgan. I've known all along you and Catherine were seeing each other. I've even been thinking of calling you in for a chat myself. Print it. Okay, we're on the wrong set, boys. That's very nice, Martin. You can relax. We'll call you. I'll be in my dressing room. Okay, Brucey, new setup. Let's get the reverse in that doorway next. Go ahead and reload, Mr. Boys. Casey? Yes? I must speak to you right away. What? I'm a federal officer. I don't understand. Well, I'll get back to the point. Mr. Casey, three days ago you bought a baby. What? Uh, uh, come into my dressing room, please. All right, sir. Now then, Miss... Uh... Uh, Johnson. Yes. Uh, how did you know about the baby? Well, we know all about it, Mr. Casey. And it uh, concerns us very greatly. You see, that baby was kidnapped. Kidnapped? But my wife got it from the mother. No, your wife bought it from the baby's nurse, posing as the mother. She's uh, confessed everything. That's how we found out you had the child. I, I, I don't know what to say. Oh, well, Mr. Casey, I do sympathize with you, but um, steps must be taken, you know. Go on, please. The FBI is cooperating with us on this, so you can arrange for me to take the child and I'll return it to the real parents. That way, no one will need know about it and we'll save you all that embarrassing publicity. Oh, yes, the publicity. That could be quite a thing. Yeah, yes, sir. 
Well, uh, I could call Frances, uh, my wife, and arrange for you to pick up the baby, but... Uh... Yes, sir? Well, just one thing. My wife paid that woman $1,000 for the baby. I'm afraid there's no way of recovering that, Mr. Casey. The nurse spent all the money before the FBI arrested her. Oh. And uh, now, if you please call your wife. I am in a hurry. I promised the real mother her baby would sleep in its own bed tonight. Jane? Jane! Shh! Sit down and watch, Anna. Jane, look. I brought Sonny. Oh, hello, Sonny. Anna, watch this man dance. He's just wonderful. Oh, now, look. You take this kid. Here. Oh, I wanted to watch. Here. Oh, all right. Oh, now, Sonny, don't cry. Bouncy baby. That a boy. Jane. Yes. Jane, wait till you hear what happened. You got in the studio to see Martin Casey. Oh, of course. But it all went so smooth. That's the good part. This pitch is worth money in the bank. I don't follow you. You will. Look, you get dressed and go out again and sell Sonny. What? I just got him back. Will you listen to me? You get the dough for him, then I'll go to whoever you sell him to and get him back again. Oh. It's foolproof. You can get more than that TV set, and I can quit at the drive-in. Oh, gee, I don't know about this, Anna. Harry's coming home. When? The first of next week. That gives us five days. We should be able to sell Sonny twice by then. You really think so? Oh, of course. Now, look, you know that orphan home over by La Brea? Yeah. Well, the first thing in the morning, you take Sonny in his little cart and walk near that main building. When you see anyone coming out, pass him and let him see Sonny. You know what to do from there. Sure. You really think it'll work, huh? Well, if it'll work once, it'll work again. <laughs> Meanwhile, in a nearby FBI field office, Special Agent Watkins is seated beside the desk of Agent Jim Taylor. Taylor has just finished a phone conversation. That was a long talk, Jim. That was Martin Casey. Oh. He just spoke to his lawyer, and now he's complaining about a federal representative who called on him today. Who was the caller? Pretty obvious it was an impersonator. A girl. What was the pitch? Yeah, it seems Casey's wife met a woman in the park and bought her baby. Bought her baby? Yeah. Pretty rough, huh? Anyway, this impersonator called on Casey this afternoon, told him the baby had been kidnapped, and told him the FBI would return the baby to its real home without publicity. And Casey bit? Yeah, and you can't really blame him, Ed. Publicity means a lot in his life. This frightened him. That still isn't an excuse for buying a life in the first place. No, there's no excuse for that. In a way, they deserve what happened, but the people who sold the baby deserve even more. Well, we know at least two women are in on the scheme. I wonder if that's all. Uh, it's hard to say. Two could work it alone. Just what did the Casey's pay for the baby? A thousand dollars. That's a sizable nick. Yeah. Ceiling price for a human life. Ah, come on, Ed. Let's go out and interview the Casey's in person. Jane! For Pete's sake! Huh? What, Anna? Uh, I'm trying to work out my routine. Now, what was the name of the people who bought Sonny? I told you. Mr. and Mrs. Dennis McGough. Oh, yeah. McGough. He said he was a set designer with the majors, and she didn't pat an eye when I asked for a thousand. She's nice. She's even going to keep calling the baby Sonny. That's real sweet. She asked me what to call him, so I told her even though his real name was Harry Bakeman Jr., we thought Sonny was cuter. Jane. She did, too. Jane. Huh? You told her the kid's real name? I just told you I did. Honey, let me break it to you easy. The police frown on what we're doing. So what? So you got to be more careful. Oh, don't be silly. The last woman didn't check, neither will this one. Well, just watch it from now on, huh? i better get going and pick up our meal ticket. Oh, yeah, and if he cries, just... Oh, I'll get it. If it's a drive-in, tell him to get a new Bo Peep. Hello? Hello, honey. Guess who? Oh, no. Decided to fly back. Nothing but the best. Harry. 
Where are you? I'm at the airport. Kiss Sonny for me and I'll be home in half an hour. Bye. Bye, Harry. Anna. I'm thinking. He'll be home in half an hour. Jane, how much of this junk in this flat do you want to keep? Well, just some clothes and, and the TV set. Oh, forget the set. Pack your clothes. Quick. Anna, I can't leave the set. It costs okay, so much. Okay, okay. We'll have the cab driver loaded up, only we've got to hurry. Come on, I'll help you pack. <laughs> We will return in just a moment to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Do you have Social Security? That's good. But if you have a wife and children, it is much better to provide full security for them. Mr. Robert Warson, a member of the Equitable Society, knew that. And that worried you, didn't it, Mr. Warson? You bet it did. Do you know of a family of five today who could live comfortably on about $105 a month? Frankly, no. Well, that's all my Social Security would pay to my wife if something happened to me. But then, a few months ago, I heard you describe a fact-finding chart that would show me how much more I would need to keep her and the children in comfort. That's our famous equitable fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. The fact-finding chart is free to any of our listeners. Well, I called my local Equitable Society representative. He came over with a fact-finding chart. In five minutes, we learned how much my wife and children would need to keep them well-fed, well-housed, and well-clothed until the youngest graduated from high school. I discovered that all I needed for full security was a little extra life insurance. And that's when I joined the Equitable Society. Now you're protected by the Equitable Family Security Plan. Yes, indeed. And I think any man with a family and only Social Security owes it to them to call up his local Equitable man. A good man to do business with. Indeed he is. Your local Equitable Society representative is selected on the basis of character, intelligence, and friendliness. His business is to bring you freedom from worry. So no matter what your insurance problem, owning your own home, providing education for your children, or future security for your family, call him. Ask for your free copy of the fact-finding chart for fathers and mothers. Consult the yellow pages of your local telephone directory for the name of your local equitable representative. It's listed under equitable. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now back to tonight's FBI file, The Baby Peddlers. Children were made to love, not to sell. A child brings into a home a foundation, the foundation of a generation to come. There are many kind, generous persons who wish a child in their home. These people wish to spread their security to an insecure little human being. However, because there are so many families who seek a baby, the process of adoption often takes more than a year. If you are one of the persons on the long waiting lists of the adoption agencies, we ask you to remain patient. Do not seek a black market baby. Do not leave yourself open to the cunning, depraved mind of the criminal and his scheme to hurt you through the happiness you seek. Remember, it is not legal to buy a human being. There are many written laws against it. There are even greater unwritten laws against it. Tonight's file continues in the FBI field office. Special Agent Taylor has just returned from investigating another complaint. He finds Agent Watkins waiting for him. Anyone call while I was out, Ed? No calls, Jim. You get the whole story from Mr. and Mrs. McGough? Yeah, practically the same as it was with the Casey's. Description fits the girl as being the same, and she again posed as a federal officer. They take the McGoes for a thousand, too? With no trouble at all. Mrs. McGough was a little smarter, though, when it came to giving up the baby. Well, what happened? Well, when she was told the baby had to be returned, Mrs. McGough didn't believe the impersonator. Said she wanted to call this office and check. Good for her. Impersonator said that would be all right with her, and when Mrs. McGough turned for the phone, she was slugged from behind. Then our gal grabbed the baby and ran, huh? Yeah, that's it. But we have more to work on this time. How's that? Well, when the McGoes bought the child, the mother or nurse or... Whoever she really is told her the child's name was Harry Bateman Jr., and that's not all. Go on. She also said the child didn't have anyone to play with, and that's why she was selling him. Mm. Said his daddy worked in pictures, was gone a lot, and she had to work. Jim, you know that could have easily been a story. I don't think it was, Ed. Why? I checked with Central Casting. They have a cowboy extra registered with them. 
His name is Harry Pinkman. Harry Bakeman? Yes, sir, that's right. Mr. Bakeman, I'm a special agent of the FBI. Here are my credentials. The FBI? Something's happened to Jane and Sonny. What is it, mister? Uh, What's sir, happened? Take it easy, Mr. Bakeman, please. Uh, may I come in? Oh, sure. Thanks. I've been going near crazy just waiting here. I called Jane, told her I'd be here. What happened, mister? I, I, I haven't seen your wife and son, Mr. Bakeman. I'd like to question you about them, though. Now, you say you called and said you'd be here. Where were you, sir? Well, I've been in Montana on location with a movie. I just got in a few hours ago. I called Jane. I figured she'd wait here. I see. Now, is your wife short and blonde, and is your boy called Sonny? Yes, sir, that's them. Hmm. What about a tall, red-haired girl? Would you know who that might be? Well, sure, that's Anna. Anna Maxwell. She's a friend of Jane's. I see. Anna Maxwell. Mister, why are you writing all this down? You know where my family is? No, sir, I'm afraid not. Mr. Bakeman, what I have to say isn't very pleasant, but... Well, we have reason to believe your wife and her friend have been selling your son. What? They've been selling your boy to couples who want children. Then they go back and trick the victims into giving the child back to them. Mr., you're mistaken, that's for sure. Jane wouldn't... Mr. Bakeman, do you mind if I look around? Maybe we can find a lead as to where they've gone. That bottle. Jane! Sonny, Sonny, here's the bottle. Don't you cry. Oh, gee, I hope it's warm enough. He won't go to sleep unless it's warm enough. <laughs> Getting spoiled in those rich homes, huh? Well, we're not doing so bad ourselves. I don't know. This apartment is so fancy. How long can we afford it? Listen, honey, with an address like this and clothes like I bought today, little Anna's going to land herself a rich husband in no time. Then we won't have to sell Sonny anymore. We can give him to someone for keeps. Yeah, or, or maybe even send him back to Harry. Oh, stop thinking about Harry. Sit down. Relax. As soon as I take this dress off, I don't want to wrinkle it. I'm wearing it when I take Sonny out tomorrow. That's what you think. Why not? It's the prettiest dress I ever owned. Yeah, that's the trouble. Honey, you're selling this baby because you have to. Remember? If you have money for dresses like that, who's going to believe you haven't enough money for a maid to keep Sonny? Oh, yeah. You wear the old dress. You'll be wearing a new one soon enough. Maybe we'll even get you a new husband, too. Rich, instead of saddle sore. What'd you uncover, Ed? Well, I checked the milk company that used to deliver milk to the Bakemans. Yeah? She didn't order it delivered anywhere else. Well, that figures. She can pick milk up anywhere. You think they're uh, still in Hollywood, Jim? Yeah, here at least in L.A. Sure, a big enough place to hide in. They know their way around here. I left a man to watch that orphanage on La Brea. Chances are they'll try another spot, though. Yeah, I thought of that. Well, we'll have a man cover each one, but they might just contact people on the street or park or anywhere. We can't cover this whole city. No. Hey, uh, what about those pills we found in the flat? Oh, I checked the drugstore where Mrs. Bakeman bought them. They were for headache. Mm. If she wants any more, she can pick them up at any drugstore. No reason for her to come to this particular one. Mm. Well, we may have something here. Oh, what's that? It's a list of everything we found in the Bakeman flat. On this list is a bill of sale from the Jenkins radio store for an expensive television set. So? So included in the bill of sale is an order for the dealer to install a roof aerial within a week. There was no roof aerial on the Bakeman flat. loud. Sonny's asleep in the chair. Oh. Where have you been? What are you all dressed up for? You like to dress? Well, listen to this. I go out in a rent a snazzy convertible, see? <laughs> then guess where I drive to? The beach? Uh-uh. Back to that crummy drive-in. I took a chance. I didn't figure Harry would be around to see me. He wasn't. But why go there? Are you kidding? After all the nights I slaved in that place for chicken feet... I pulled in, I honked the horn, and I ordered the best meal in the place. Was it good? 
I don't know. I didn't eat it. I called for the manager and told him to take it back. And I drove off. <laughs> Gee, I bet you had fun. Hey, where are all those drapes pulled back? Oh, I just had the roof aerial installed. They put it in down through there this morning. The set plays real well. And... Oh, we need a sign on that door. You quiet, Sonny. I'll get it. Now, now, Sonny. Stop crying. Anna Maxwell? Well? Are you Anna Maxwell? Yeah, but just who are you? I'm uh, very busy. I'm aware of your activities, Miss Maxwell. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Here are my credentials. Anna, who is it? You would have... You better come here, Jane. Uh, this gentleman is... Get up! Mr. Wichigo? Running downstairs where a friend of mine will help her into a car. Shall we join them, Mrs. Bakeman? Anna Maxwell was found guilty in federal court for impersonating a federal officer and was sentenced to a term of three years in a federal reformatory for women. Jane Bakeman was turned over to state authorities and was sentenced to a term in prison for selling her baby. The special agents Taylor and Watkins were able to locate the women criminals in tonight's case. When Agent Taylor checked with the radio store which had sold Jane Bakeman the television set, they reported to Taylor that Mrs. Bakeman had called them from her new address and had given instructions for them to come and install the roof aerial which she had coming with the television set. Thus, a child was returned to a loving parent and two criminals were prosecuted for their heartless act. For heart and love are words which never describe the criminal who deals in black market babies. And with relentless energy, your FBI tracks down these men and women who violate federal laws within its jurisdiction and put souls up for sale. It is the duty of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, within the limit of its jurisdiction, to protect and safeguard all citizens at all cost. You'd be surprised how simple and easy it is to plan for the future financial security of your wife and youngsters. Get acquainted with your local Equitable Society representative. Ask him for your free copy of the Equitable Fact-Finding Chart for Fathers and Mothers. He'll be glad to talk it over with you and without obligation. No matter what your problem may be, a carefree life after you retire, college educations for your children, home ownership free and clear. You don't have to be rich to enjoy freedom from worry. Consult your local telephone directory for the name of your local equitable representative. It's listed in the yellow pages under Equitable. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, Homicide. Its title, Mama's Boy. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Dick Carr. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Colleen Collins, James Dobson, Georgia Ellis, Catherine Keith, James McCallion, Henry Morgan, and Steve Pendleton. This is your FBI, a Jerry Devine production, was directed by Sid Goodwin. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Mama's Boy on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. There's fun for the whole family when Ozzie and Harriet come your way next. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.